Oh, dirty. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is freezing in Alabama. It is like 49 degrees this morning. It is so cold. I'm wearing a big sweater with funky sleeves, pants. I'm wearing boots for the first time. Boots. Boot season, boots, boots. How's everybody doing? Good morning, good morning. So I'm just getting my coffee ready for um hmm. just getting my coffee ready. Hi Mayor. Um and I'm in the office early because Michael was out of town, so I had to take the kids to school. Um really early and drop the dog off and blah, blah, blah. So I'm already at the office. It's quiet here. There's no one here yet. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Um, anyway, my birthday is in four days from now. You know, for anybody keeping track. Very exciting. And I looked at my um, time hop, and five years ago today, I was on uh, Real Hop. Uh, no, what the fuck was I on? Um, what's Hop? What the hell is that Bravo show called? Um, in the clubhouse with Andy or some shit? What's it called? What's happening? No. Um, I think it's called, what's it called? Anyway, the show with Andy Cohen. Oh, watch what happens live. Yes. Watch what happens live. Five years ago today, I was on watch what happens live. Lorianne is doing great. Um, yeah, five years ago today, I was on Watch What Happens Live. So that was pretty cool. Um, can't remember the name of the show. I'm so not like a Bravo person. It's so surreal to me still to this day that I was on Bravo because I don't even like watch Bravo. I do have a major crush on Captain Lee, but that's only because I know him as a human being and love him as a human being. So it's easy to, you know, have a crush on someone you know. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about sex with your significant and what is normal because I have no less than 9,000 messages in my inbox from people who are concerned that their marriage is not, or their relationship, and these are straight relationships, bisexual relationships, gay relationships. I'm talking this problem affects Everybody across the board, you want to talk about equality? It is clearly equality in people wondering if they're having enough sex. Um, so anyway, I wanted to talk to you about this because I think A, not enough people talk about it, and B, I went through it. I went through this exact thing. So there is some like stigma, right, around um, married couples who don't have a lot of sex. 
a lot of times people feel like they hear married couples say, oh, we have sex like four to five times a week. Like, bitch, no, you don't. Stop. Stop with the lies. Nobody believes that. And if you are telling the truth, maybe preface it with, um, we know we're not the norm. This is not the norm. This is the exception, not the rule. Okay? Because married people in the thick of it, raising children, are not having sex five times a week. It's just not real. By the way, we weren't even having sex five times a week when we were dating. Okay? So there's that. I love sex. I would have sex with Michael. I would have sex with anyone. Girls, boys, men, old men. Just kidding. I wouldn't have sex with anyone, but I would have sex with Michael. Uh, I think I would do it like twice a week. Michael's like, yeah, okay. Twice a week or not. But I want to tell you a story. Let me rewind. Um... A long time ago, I used to think that if I sent my husband out into the world, okay, after I had had sex with him, he would be less inclined to cheat. So whenever Michael was leaving to go to like work or travel or anything, I would always smash it down, okay? Let me tell you the truth. If a man or woman is going to cheat, it doesn't matter if you smash it down. I'm just telling you the truth doesn't matter you could smash it down they could leave they could leave the house at 9 a.m just smashed it down and go meet somebody they want to have sex with at 10 and smash that person down too mm. so um so when we were having children and we had olivia and then we had max i think it was worse the worst after max um, I remember crying to my sister Meredith. Hi, Cal. I remember, we're talking about sex with your significant other this morning. Um, I remember crying to my sister Meredith that it had been months since Michael and I had sex. Months. And she was like, Jamie, I think that's normal. I think it's normal when you have two kids under the age of one or two to uh, to go months without having sex. And I was like, no, it's never normal. I, I can't really have the good sex right now because I'm so fat and I'm so emotional and I'm nursing and I'm bleeding and I'm still, uh, and he wants, I know he's a man. I know he wants to have sex. He's gotta be having sex with somebody else. So I like drug Michael to counseling, which by the way, you guys know I'm a huge proponent of counseling. Just like getting your car, your oil changed. Nobody would ever judge you for taking care of your car, getting a vacuum, getting it detailed, getting your oil changed. But when you service your marriage, people go, ooh, they're in counseling. Like, bitch, I'm getting my oil changed, okay? I'm getting my marriage oil changed. Can I get my marriage oil changed, please? Okay? So we went to counseling and it turned out that Michael was just exhausted. He was up in the middle of the night with the kids so that I could sleep and he literally was just exhausted and it was almost like his man mind shut off. He was in like super dad mode. We had a 11 and a half month old and a newborn and he was just exhausted. And like, it had nothing to do with the way he felt about me, but let me tell you what it did to my self-esteem. Like the stock market during the Great Depression. I'm telling you, my self-esteem plummeted all the way down to my socks. And it broke me because I, uh, physical touch is my love language. I'm a Libra and physical touch is my love language. So if you don't touch me, I feel like you don't love me. See how that works? So that's what it did to my self-esteem, okay? So I started asking other people who had children, 
How many times a week do you and your husband have sex? Now, I don't know how many told me the truth. Okay? That's the thing. Everybody makes jokes like, oh, my God, sex? What's that? We have kids. But like, okay, is that the norm? Then say that. Then say that to other women so other women can feel normal. Say the truth. Don't make a joke. Don't dismiss it. Say what it is. Are you telling me, person, hypothetical person, that because you have small children right now, you guys are not having a lot of sex? Is it normal to go weeks, even months without sex? I'm here to tell you it is. I'm here to tell you it has no bearing on whether your marriage will work or not. I'm also here to tell you it has no bearing on whether your spouse is cheating or not. Because I can tell you confidently that Michael and I were going months at a time without having sex and he was not cheating on me and I was not cheating on him. Also, I looked like Fudgy the Whale, but I, and everything was leaking. Every orifice, every hole of my body was leaking something. It was disgusting. So I can understand that's not sexy for anybody. I mean, it just isn't, okay? Now, obviously we got pregnant the first time we had sex after Olivia was born with Max. So obviously we were trying to have sex. Clearly just getting pregnant all the time. Um, so I want to tell you, when I post here, does it show on the news feed? It does show on the news feed, I believe. All right, so let's talk about it. And by the way, if you live a life where you feel like you can't have a healthy conversation on Facebook, change the people that are in your life. Because if there are people that are going to judge you for something you comment on social media, they should legitimately kiss your ass. Um, okay, so let's talk about realistic. Let's talk about a healthy marriage. No one's cheating, just regular marriage. Let's talk about no kids. Let's start with no kids. Married women right now with no kids or grown kids. I'm talking no small children in the home. We're talking to you. How many times a week do you have sex? And tell the truth. Tell the truth. I think... Whatever is consensual and works for you and your spouse is normal. So you and your spouse have sex twice a month and that makes you guys happy, that's your normal. You don't need to be in the three to four time a week group. First of all, your vagina wasn't even designed like that, okay? It's not a parking garage. Second of all, okay, you may have a job, you may be going through your changes, you may be whatever. Okay, Charlotte says three to four times a week. Okay, Charlotte, your vagina is a parking garage. I take that back. Marcia says once a week. Okay, once a week. Black Carrie Bradshaw says once a month. Okay, but is that, this is my question to you. Black Carrie Bradshaw, which might be the best freaking handle name I ever heard. Is that consensual? And does it make you and your significant other happy. The difference is this. Michael and I had not had sex in months and it was making me miserable. Michael was fine, I was miserable. So it did not work for us. That is the difference. Whatever you and your spouse are doing, if it works for both of you and it's once a year, then it works for you and that's your normal. But if someone is unhappy, it doesn't work. And I think there's a lot of shame with women who want sex when the man doesn't have the same sex drive because the society tells us men always want sex. Men always want sex. Men always want to have sex. So if you're the woman married to the man whose love language is acts of service and he doesn't count eating pussy as an act of service, okay? He's talking about taking out the garbage and you're over there like, can I get some? And he's like, that's not really my love language. And you're like, so what's wrong with me? It makes you feel shameful because everybody else in the world is talking about how much men want sex and you're looking at your spouse going, okay, but why doesn't mine, right? Why doesn't mine? So I'm saying, if it doesn't work, okay, so we're talking to people without children. So it looks like people without children, right? No children in the home or grown children who were never there, like high schoolers or something, right? It looks like sex is 
a very big deal. Laura says three to four times a week, but after babies, there was dry spells. They were unhappy. She wanted more, but they found their groove back. I like that. Um, I'm looking. I'm trying to read. Lisa says we use we have to use cheesy bar lines to get each other into the bedroom, but it works for us. Whatever works for you. Jennifer says one to two times a week, sometimes three times a day, and sometimes not for a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, see, Black Carrie Bradshaw. So it's consensual, and that is the norm right now for you. Then that's the norm for you. There's no reason for you guys to feel bad about that or shameful about that. You guys are on the same page. Nobody's cheating. Everybody's happy. That's it. Great. Let's go to the women who have children in the home. And let's be honest, okay? The women who have children in the home. I have three children, okay? Eight, 10, and 11, all right? I would say if I'm being honest, if I'm being totally honest, Michael and I have sex on average once a week, okay? Sometimes twice a week, but if we're talking about average, we're talking once a week. And of those once a week, I initiate all the all the times of the week. I initiate it all the time. I tried to fight that in my marriage for a long time. We went to counseling about it. We went to fucking, we prayed about it. We saw Father Bob about it. We fucking played golf about it. We drank coffee about it. It's not gonna change. It's not who he is. So I take the initiative and I initiate it. And when I do, he always says yes. And then it, we smash and then I go to bed. Um, so for us, once a week works. It works. Okay, Ashley has five kids and she's saying two to three times a week. Um, okay. So somebody else said that they have two children and they have sex every once every two weeks. So that's twice a month. Another woman said they have three children and she says her average would be twice a week. It looks like, here's what I wanna tell you based on the comments. For those of you who have small children, it looks like twice a month is the norm. It looks like twice a month is the norm. And I don't think this has any impact on whether people are cheating, whether they're happy. I don't think that any man who loves his wife and has a bunch of kids running around the house goes to work going, damn, me and my wife only have sex twice a month. I hate my life. No, I don't think so. Um, Kayla says, I have two kids and we average two times a week. Okay. Look at all of the women who are saying this conversation is making me feel so much better. We have to talk, ow, I just bit my tongue. <laughs> we have to talk about what is real and where the shame comes in. Okay? There is, there is a stigma attached to sex. There just is. If you have sex before you're married, you're the bad girl. If you have a lot of sex when you are married, you're, I don't know what you are, a dugger. If you don't have a lot of sex when you're married, you must be cheating. It's like there's always some weird stigma attached to sex. Hi. And I think the most important thing for you to understand is whatever is normal and can, I, here's, the big thing is, the biggest issue is when one person is not happy. What scares me is the amount of comments from people saying, well, tough shit on her or tough shit on him because I'm too tired or I don't. Like, I understand that people get tired, 
But let's be realistic about sex, guys. Lionel Richie was lying when he said all night long, right? So let's be realistic. How long does it really take two people to make love or to smash whatever they want to do? I mean, I think realistically we're looking at five to 15 minutes. I know you're tired, but if it's ruining your marriage, if your significant other is legitimately not happy, are you willing to lose, like I'm, are you really willing to like turn a blind eye to the needs of your spouse because you'd rather watch Grey's Anatomy in your ice cream stained sweatpants? Now, some of you are going to go, Jamie, this is shame. No, this is an, I'm not shaming you. This is an honest conversation. We're here to talk. My conversation to you is, my, my question really is, if you know your spouse is not happy, if you know your significant other is saying to you, this once a month thing isn't working for me, and you say, I'm too tired. So let me ask you this, since it's a conversation, why is it a problem if you don't want to? Okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. We as a society created a boundary around marriage and I'm not talking about God right now, okay? I'm talking about society. I said what I said. I'm a believer and you know I am, but let's talk about the institution of marriage we created with the boundaries and the rules about monogamy and being faithful. So we create this world in marriage where you can only have sex with the person you marry, right? That's a big fucking rule of marriage. That's like the number one rule. You can only have sex with the person you marry. Okay. What happens when the person you marry doesn't want to have sex? What then? If you're destroying the person's self-esteem that you're married to, is that really on, like, we're having a discussion. We're having a discussion. This is a conversation. I'm not being, I'm not challenging anyone. I'm not being argumentative. I'm literally just having the discussion because if we don't talk about it, we're gonna all just keep living with blinders on. So what happens if your wife wants to have a lot of sex. Let's put it on the woman for a minute. My name is Jamie and I want to have a lot of sex. I got married. I agreed to only have sex with one person. I want to have a lot of sex with that person. But that person doesn't want to have sex. So what the fuck am I supposed to do with this rule? This rule that was created to say, you can only have sex with one person. Have you ever played catch? Raise your hand if you've ever, ever in your whole life taken a ball and gone outside. Okay, guys, we're not talking about trauma. Why do people always have to go to the extreme? Obviously, if there is trauma or a medical reason or something like that, we're not talking about that. Those are exceptions, absolutely. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about regular relationships. Oh, I'm coming for the men in a second. Don't you worry, people. Don't you worry. Raise your hand if you've ever played catch. Taking a ball outside, whether you were young, maybe in high school with your high school boyfriend, maybe with your kids, whatever. You take a ball, you go outside, you throw the ball. Have you ever tried to play catch by yourself? Just throw the ball across the yard. Guys, you can't play catch by yourself. We created rules in marriage to say, we make vows, we're only gonna have sex with one person. And then one person decides they don't wanna have sex anymore. Once a year, twice a year, once a month, I don't know, whatever. And the other person's self-esteem starts to plummet. They start to feel bad about themselves. They start to doubt themselves. They start to wonder if this marriage works for them anymore. And we shut down, we stop communicating. We start saying things like, I'm tired, right? 
when it's the woman who wants to have a lot of sex, she's even shamed. It's way worse. The expectation is that men want to have a lot of sex. Try being the woman who wants to smash all the time. And everybody around you going, what's your problem? How many times does he need to have sex with you for you to be happy? Well, it's my love language. I don't know. But it hurts when you're rejected. And it makes you feel bad. I mean, you can throw the ball up and catch it. You could also masturbate 17 times a week if you really want to. But guess what? I didn't get married to masturbate. I could be single and rub one out three times a day in my own house. See how that works? I don't need the constraints of monogamy to rub one out. I could do that on my own. I'm saying when, at what point do we start looking at the situation for what it is? That's why I'm saying whatever is normal and makes you two happy is what works in your marriage. So if it's once a month, but you're both satisfied, then once a month works. If it's once a year and you're both satisfied, then you're, then you're good. You're Gucci. But if one of you is unsatisfied and in one of your you is suffering and one of your self-esteem is damaged and one of it doesn't work and I don't care how many excuses we make I'm tired we have little kids I blah 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 then take the constraint of only having sex with each other off the table if you're going I, I literally used to say to Michael if if we are never gonna have sex then let me have sex with other people you can't hold me to monogamy and not give me the dick what the hell is that? No, that doesn't work for me. That doesn't work for me. I mean, we're fine now. This was years ago when Max was three months old. Max is going to be 11 now. But I'm saying, you can't tell me I got to be monogamous and then be stingy with the dick. No, then I'm not being monogamous. Whoa, then I'm not being monogamous. I'm not. Call me a cheater. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not going to follow your stupid rule if you're not going to play by the rules that you set, that this whole thing set. I'm not doing it. And maybe, maybe some people would say, I'm an asshole. Like I said, we went to counseling. We worked through it. Okay, we're fine now. But I'm dipping into my bag. Guys, I'm sweating from this conversation. I'm actually sweating in my armpits. So there's two separate things to think about here. No matter how many times you two are having sex, if it works for you and you are satisfied and your significant other is satisfied, you are normal. That's it. Once a year, once a decade, if you're both happy, then you are normal. What, what starts to become an issue is when one person is unhappy and their self-esteem starts to chip away and everybody wants to go, oh, but you made a vow. You made a vow, don't cheat. You made a vow, don't cheat. You made a vow, so what? Uh, nobody ever is ever gonna touch me and I'm never gonna have sex, but I'm supposed to honor some bull. No. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I disagree. Um, my priest friend, my, you mean my brother-in-law? My brother-in-law says you can't have one spouse unhappy. That if you, if you ignore the needs of your spouse, my, my, my priest says if you ignore the needs, you're not honoring your vows. Part of the vow is to pour into your significant other, to try your best to meet their needs. Uh, you know, Father Bob was on my side. But what I realized was Michael and I weren't speaking the same love language. So we had a lot of work to do, but we put the work in and we got there, right? I was taking the fact that I had to initiate it as like a, I was taking it personally. Now I understand that's not the case. It's not the case. He loves me. He wants me to initiate it. He wants me to climb all over him. And now I do. So 
Chris, Crystal has a really good question, but I want to, it's not like letting me see. Okay, Crystal says, okay, so my question is, if you really don't want to have sex once or twice a week, how do you say to him, go have sex with somebody else and still expect him to want to stay in the marriage? Well, you can't say it like that. You can't be like, I'm not having sex with you. Go smash somebody else. God says cheating is a sin, so I am stuck. Girl, I could probably list about 50 other sins you're doing. I'm not encouraging you to cheat, but let's not pretend we don't sin. Um, you can't say, go have sex with someone else. That's not how the conversation has to go. It has to be in a... I don't know the right answer to that, but I think what you're proposing then would be considered an open marriage. And I know a lot of people who live in open marriages, and I would say the best converse, the best way to approach that is, I love you, and I want to raise children with you, and grow old with you, and all. You're not a sinner, Kay. Are you Jesus? Are you the only human being who doesn't sin? Holy shit! Let me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Guys, we have somebody who doesn't sin. I never saw it. It's like the chupacabra or the Jersey devil. I never saw it. I never saw it. Somebody who doesn't sin, basically Jesus. And she's here. Well, y'all can't say that. Y'all can't say if he does, she's going to cry. You don't know that. I know so many people who are in open marriages, who are happier than they've ever been. So you can't say that. You can say, I don't think I'd be able to handle that. But you can't tell Crystal she can't handle that. That's not fair. See, we got to stop shaming people for what works for them. Guys, Jesus is on Coffee Talk. This is a big day for us. We all need to fix our hair. Listen, this is just an honest conversation about sex with your significant other, okay? I'm not suggesting anybody do anything crazy. It's just an honest conversation so that you can take a hard look at what your contribution is to what goes on in your house. That's all. Again, if you and your spouse are happy, I don't care if you have sex only on November 2nd every third year. If you and your spouse are happy, then you are normal and you are happy. It is when someone is not happy that it becomes a problem how do you overcome zero drive like it's a chore do it like it's a job i would say masturbate more to be honest i would because i'm telling you it is the more you do it the more you want it it's a muscle oh my god i love amy it was like um okay we sit in this room we sure do we, no, Father Bob is not on Coffee Talk. We sin in this room, Kay. This is the sinner's room, okay? Fuck. I keep dropping the damn phone. Um, please don't say that to Kay. What she is saying is that she doesn't go out and purposefully and knowingly sin for her own can't see it. I can't read the comment because my stupid phone. Anyway, listen, there's something for everybody. We're busting Kay's chops because Kay said she doesn't sin, but none of us sin. So of course, Kay, you don't, I don't, nobody else does. And um, it's fine. Only Jessica Beale sins. Everybody knows that. Hello, she's the sinner. <laughs> Um, here's the thing. I am a proponent of put the work into your marriage. Let me just say that. For those of you who are concerned that I'm like a big go cheat person, I'm not. Put the work into your marriage. But you can't ignore the needs of your partner and then wonder why your marriage is not working. That's not fair. And to the women who want more sex than the man, solidarity, I feel you, I get you, 
I understand you, I am you, we are in this together. And it is, it is an ongoing like thing. You gotta like work on it. You gotta communicate. You gotta figure out your norm and the two of you gotta get on a groove and like if, and, and also, for those of you who don't have medical issues and no, tr- you know, for those of you who just have a regular old vagina, why does having sex with your spouse feel like a chore? Why do you want to stay in a marriage with somebody that it feels like a chore to have sex with? I, I'm, I want to really talk about this. I wish we were in a room. I wish we could all talk because I'm confused as to why regular vagina women say that having sex with their significant other that they say they still want to be married to, that they love, feels like a a chore? Like folding laundry? The dick? I don't get it. I don't get it. I want to get it. I want to understand, but I don't get it. How did you get to the place where it didn't make you feel bad all the time? Honestly, I changed my mindset about initiating it. See, I wasn't initiating it because I felt like him initiating it meant he loved me. And what I didn't understand was that Michael's love language and my love language weren't matching up. And once I stopped making it personal, right? And I started to realize that he just needed me to do step one. Think about the bases. Remember when you were in high school, it was all about the bases, like first base, then second base, then third base or whatever. I started to see like warm up, you know, like uh, practice. What do they call it? Practice, I guess, or throwing the ball around, whatever. I don't play baseball. I don't know. Was me initiating it. And then he could do first base, second base, third base. He just needed me to get, to bring the base, walk the baseball out onto the field. And I stopped taking that personally. Alexa, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here, Alexa. How exciting that Alexa's first coffee talk ever was this one. She's probably mortified. (laughs) She's probably like, who is this bitch? Um... Listen, guys, this is just a conversation. It's all about communication. There's no right answer. Michael's love language is acts of service. So the way Michael shows me love is he takes out the garbage and he paints the, he builds me a vanity. And for a lot of women, that's it. They want a man to wash the dishes and fold the laundry. For me, I'd rather have a man who wants to like stick his fingers in my pants. Because that's my love language. But it's not his love language. And I had to stop taking it so personal because when you take things personal, it legitimately causes resentment in your marriage. But we need to have face-to-face conversations. We really do. This should be an in-room conversation. It's very hard to do it over the computer. All right, I love you guys. I feel like I've literally been talking your ear off for like... Um, you know, I just wanted us to have an honest conversation. And I think we did. I think at least at the very least, it's started some conversation. Um, all right. Um, it's so funny how some women are saying my, I can't stand it because He's always all over me and it's so annoying. And other women are saying, I would give anything for my husband to initiate sex. It is so funny how we just, if it isn't your, it's unbelievable. It's crazy to me. Um, All right, I love you guys so much. Kyle is here now, so I'm gonna spare him all the sex conversation, but I love you guys very much. And if you're not getting sex and you wanna have sex, slide into my DMs and I'll come have sex with you, okay? I love you. Have a great, great day.